<laughs> hey guys, it's Faye from Solar Flow, and I'm back with another video. Today's topic is energy vampires, trauma, and energetic slavery. So if this sounds good to you, please continue to watch. Um, and I would be delighted if you could subscribe to my channel. And definitely if this video resonates, please like and comment. So what are energy vampires? Why do we care? <laughs> How do we make sure we don't get ensnared and turn into energetic slaves for them? So energy vampire is kind of a term. I feel like it's trendy. Like I feel like probably if you're into this kind of metaphysical stuff, it's something that you may have encountered once before. You may have actually even encountered an energy vampire unknowingly um, and had some sort of an interaction with them and then wondered why you felt so tired. The reason is energetic vampires, just as the name um, would imply, they are vampires and they are siphoning our energy. So whereas um, vampires supposedly are drinking people's blood and that's their source of supply. Energy vampires are actually siphoning off our energy and that's their supply. So how does this work? Basically, if you have ever encountered somebody, it could have even been a really, really short interaction. You could have been like, for example, I hear this so many times, standing in like the grocery store at the frozen fruit section, you have a quick interaction with someone and then walk away and are completely exhausted. That's because that person is an energy vampire and they have extracted your life force energy from you. All right, so let's break this down. I love this example because it is such a good example. Let's say someone has gone to a public restroom, they've left, and now they have toilet paper stuck to their shoe. It's trailing behind them, so they don't see it, they don't know that it's there, but other people can see it. So, just like you can have a physical attachment connected to your shoe that other people can see, energetically, entities or beings can see where we have a chink in our aura. So if you think about it, if you've ever heard the expression like personal space, um, your personal space is the space right around you that is your auric field. And that is, it is a sacred space actually. And if somebody gets into it and you haven't invited them into it, it can feel a little invasive. There is an expectation of a certain amount of room around us that we are safe in our own bodies. Now, in the event that somebody has had a trauma committed to them, or if they have experienced a trauma of some kind, maybe it had nothing to do with another person, maybe they were in like a car accident or something and it was very traumatizing for them, these experiences leave a chink in our energetic field. And an entity can discover it, they can actually see it, just like you can see toilet paper attached to a shoe. They can see where, let's say there's a hole in somebody's um, energetic field. And here's a great way of looking at it. I live in California. We have earthquakes here. So I'm going to go with this example. So there's a fault. There's a fault line where the rocks that are under the ground where we can't see it, they can either bump into each other like this, or they can slide like this. And the result of that, where there is a delineation underground or a separation, can cause these earthquakes. Just like you can have a 
physical earthquake because of a delineation in what you cannot see, you can have these energetic earthquakes because of the same thing, a delineation in which you cannot see energetically, but it's actually the reverse. You have a, a fault line, they bump into each other, you have an earthquake, you have the trauma. This is the opposite. You have the trauma, you have a delineation, you have a separation energetically, and that is where these energy vampires can get in. So, how do we protect ourselves? And, and how, let's talk about even on a very granular level, how does it actually work? How are they getting in and extracting our energy from us? So, someone has experienced a trauma. Let's say they're in a coffee shop, minding their own business, drinking some coffee, doing some work. An entity or a being can see this delineation, can see where there is a hole in the person's energetic field. They, by their very presence, can actually come, sit down next to a person that they don't even know. They can come sit down next to a person. They are a certain kind of energy that is not jiving with this other person's energy. It's causing this person who's just sitting there minding their own business to actually start to have a physical reaction to this person's energy. Maybe you've had this where someone just made you uncomfortable and you couldn't even um, verbalize what it was about them that made you uncomfortable, but something made you uncomfortable, okay? So person sitting there minding their own business, person comes, understands that they have a chink in their armor, they come, they sit down next to them. The person who is sitting there minding their own business is having a physical reaction. They're having a response to this person being in their environment. It's what will then start to happen is the person who's sitting there will start to have, they will go into flight or fight response. Their, their hands will start to get clammy. They'll start to get cold. They'll start to feel like they want to run away. It is a direct response to this person. Now that this person is, uh, their adrenals are releasing a lot of cortisol, that has a certain delicious attraction to these beings. They have now elicited the response that they wanted in this person. They are making them uncomfortable. The person is releasing cortisol and experiencing stress. They might continue to sit there. The, per the a perpetrator is a, um, taking out their source supply, or the person is gonna feel so uncomfortable, they're gonna get up and they're going to leave. Jackpot, that's exactly what this entity wants because they now have power and control. Their very essence of being in this person's environment caused the person to have a physical response, extraction, 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 energetic fuel, fuel, fuel. Now the person gets up and walks away. That being in that entity is flying high they feel powerful. I know it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So that's one kind of interaction you could have with an ener energetic vampire. That's with, with a complete stranger. Now you, again, I'm going to go back to this example of you can be in a grocery store. You could bump into someone that, you know, maybe you know them a little bit. Maybe you know them well, maybe you don't know them well. They are coming into your sphere and because you're going to be polite. You're going to engage with them. They might come to you and they're going to unload on you all the horrible things that are going on in their life. This happens a lot to empaths. They will unload, 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 unload. You have now been energetically ensnared in a conversation that is designed to extract fuel, loosh, source supply from you, go straight to the other person. 
very few people, and especially empaths, we're not gonna be rude and we're not gonna say, this, com this conversation's making me uncomfortable. I don't wanna have it with you. I'm gonna go, right? We're polite, we're not gonna do that. So we are unwillingly, unwittingly, unknowingly in a conversation that is designed specifically to extract fuel. I have literally been in a room hearing conversations that have happened between people where one person has um, is very porous energetically, they don't have boundaries, the energetic vampire that is near them will violate the boundaries, however small that they are. I have been in these rooms where I've heard conversations going on between people literally about bowel movements. Grown adults, we're not talking about like talking about our kids and their whatever's going on with their them. Grown adults talking to somebody else about their bowel movements. That is an energy vampire. They are intentionally, although it's unconsciously, they are having a conversation that is making somebody feel uncomfortable because this person already is porous energetically. So they're just coming right on in. They're gonna have a conversation that makes somebody feel uncomfortable. This person is going to start to have a physical response to this conversation that's making them uncomfortable. Fuel, 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 extract, extract, extract. So if you are ever with somebody and they are unloading on you, they are having a topic of conversation that is not appropriate to have. They are telling you about everything that's going on in their life, barely coming up for air to ask how you're doing, not even engaging in social norms, social niceties. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Just like verbal diarrhea. That's an energy vampire. Observe how you are feeling when you disengage from them, when you get up and walk away. If you are feeling drained, that's an energy vampire. Um, here's a way to tell if you are engaging with an energy vampire. So it's the same thing. There may or may not be social norms in exchange of social norms. If they immediately start unloading on you, what's going on in their life? Energy vampire. If they only talk about themselves, energy vampire. Um, if So go back and watch the video I did on walk-ins because sometimes a walk-in will also be an energy vampire. But if they come in to you and there's like a delay, some sort of a delay in conversation where maybe it's somebody that you know a little bit of a, a better level and you might ask them like a specific question about how they're doing or something where a walk-in would not have access to that information, you'll see there's a delay. It's almost like the, bla the brain is recalibrating and the person is then coming in to engage with you as themselves instead of what this walk-in or this being, how they would choose to engage with you. Um, so pay attention to those things. Because here's also the thing, sometimes it's not even something that our conscious mind will realize. Pay attention to what signs your body is giving you. If your stomach feels clenched or tight or uncomfortable, that's a sign that the person is not energetically in a good place. Um, sometimes our gut, which is called our second brain, can actually pick up and register information that our conscious mind can't. And the reason for that is we have so many other things going on in our own mind that our intuition has sometimes been pushed out of the way altogether that we can't even pick up on these things consciously, we'll pick up on them unconsciously. And you know, a big one is we've been conditioned to be polite. We're not just gonna say to somebody in a grocery store, I'm sorry, I have to go or I'm sorry, this conversation's making me uncomfortable, or I don't think this is a prop, uh, an appropriate conversation to have. We're not gonna say things like that. The information also has to be filtered through our conscious mind before we can sometimes um, understand what we're experiencing. And the more thoughts you have in your own mind, the more the experience has to get filtered, filtered, filtered before you can pick up on it. So if your body 
is sending you some sort of a message, that is enough of a reason to disengage. Say, excuse me, I have to go and move on. So it's a good practice to get into really like tuning in and checking in with your body to see when you're around certain people, certain places, how does your body feel? If it doesn't feel good, it's just like that expression, no is a complete sentence. If your body doesn't feel good, get up and go. You don't even have to make sense of it in that time and in that space, just get up and go. Now, now that you might understand ways to see what an energetic vampire is, let's kind of discuss how do they know to come to you? How do they know that you have a chink in your energetic armor and that you are a good person for them to extract fuel from? So the reason for that is because of, again, our trauma. So we may not be, I don't want to say responsible, because that somehow, it's a bit of a tricky subject, then I'll explain why. We don't want to victim blame. And we also don't want to say to someone who has had a particular amount of trauma that they've experienced to say that they were somehow responsible for it. Um, so how we're going to approach the topic is someone has experienced something whether knowingly or unknowingly. It could have even been something that happened they were, when they were you know, young, when they were a baby, when they couldn't speak, when they couldn't advocate for themselves, but a chink in the armor has appeared. It is our responsibility, once we are aware of it, to repair the chink in our armor. The way that we do that is by healing our hurts, maybe going to therapy, maybe journaling, but by not running away from what has happened. Because the act of running away continues to keep our energetic body open and porous and is an invitation for energy vampires to come in and extract from us. So once we are aware that we have certain hurts, it is now our responsibility first and foremost, to confront whatever it is that we have experienced, whatever it is that we have endured, so that we can then reclaim our own power in it by processing the trauma and then ascending past it. Because when it is no longer something that haunts us and it is no longer something that afflicts us, then we are whole, we are healed, we are complete. We have not only healed the trauma, but we have repaired and filled in the gaps in our energetic field. We are no longer looking like an easy, um, <laughs> I keep hearing the word fix, like we're, we're no longer an easy fix. We're no longer an easy target to these energetic vampires that wanna come in. The reason that they can come in is because we have a lack of boundaries. We have a lack of boundaries because we are energetically porous. When you can confront the things that have happened to us, we can repair our trauma. We can energetically repair our auric field. And now guess what? If there is an energy vampire around, you are going to automatically be vibrating on a different level. They may or may not even see you at that point. Because think about like a radio station. I'm turning my radio to 100. I'm receiving the transmissions of station 100. If I'm turning my radio to station 100, but that person has their radio station set on 92.3, I'm not picking up the energy they are transmitting. Heal your hurts you will vibrate differently. They are going to look for an easy fix, an easy target. You are now no longer an easy target. If they see you, they are not even seeing you because you are not transmitting on their same level of vibration and frequency. They are just seeing something their mind not, might, may not even register it. 
and I've seen this, it's really, really creepy. When you are with an energy vampire, but you are no longer their primary source, it's like they'll look at you, but they don't even see you. You're there, but you're not there. They see, th see through you. It's, they're, they're like a heat-seeking missile. They're looking for the heat and the vibration that aligns with what they can extract from. The higher your vibration, the less you attract them, the less they see you. You are just vibrating at a different level. So heal your hurts, confront your wounds. Even if you don't want to pursue therapy or don't have the money to go to therapy, journal, talk about it, think about it, spend time reflecting on it so that you can transcend it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the content in this video today. If you have, please comment down below, like, share. If you have not subscribed already, please do so. And until next time, stay in the high vibration.